Welcome to my channel and uh, welcome to Conceptual Framework and Accounting Standards class. My name is Mark Ingrabilio. I'm a certified public accountant and also a professor teaching accounting, auditing, and taxation. So our topic for today is about financial instruments presentation. And for the overview of IFRS on financial instruments, we need to discuss uh, those accounting standards that were previously issued and then currently issued uh, since this affect uh, our discussion on the financial instrument. So the subject matter of this and the next lesson is the recognition, measurement, presentation, and disclosure of the financial instruments. The IASB's accounting requirements for which are regarded by many as some of the more difficult to understand. There are many likely reasons to this, including the fact that it is such a broad topic encompassing some of the more complex contracts that entities enter into. In addition, the requirements have been subject to a process of almost continual change for over the last 20 years or so and are dealt with in a number of different standards and other pronouncements. The following are the standards which deal primarily with accounting for financial instruments. So we have IAS 30, Disclosure in the Financial Statements of Banks, and similar financial institutions. So this is the very first accounting standard that covers financial instruments since uh, the banks and other financial institutions are the very first uh, institution to issue financial instruments. So uh, we issued uh, the accounting standards board, issued IAS 30 uh, as a disclosure guidance for the FS presentation of banks and similar financial institutions. In March 1995, there was an issuance of IAS 32, which focused on presentation and disclosure of financial instruments. So it is subject to significant review in 2002 and 2003 because of financial instrument nowadays is not only limited to banks and similar financial institutions, but it is very broad because most of the companies use financial instruments in their business. We also have IAS 39 for the recognition and measurement of financial instruments. So this was issued uh, in March 1999, on which it has been amended in March 2004 because of some issues in the provisions of IAS 39. In August 2005, uh, there was a issue once of IFRS 7 for financial instruments, particularly with a disclosure. It is a project principally focused on the revising IAS 30 for the banks and similar financial institutions, which it has been involved in a comprehensive review of all disclosure requirements related to financial instruments. So this resulted in the publication of IFRS 7 in August 2005, thus superseding IAS 30, which is the disclosure in the FS of banks and similar financial institutions. So that's why IAS 30 is no longer in use because we already have IFRS 7. There is also an amendment made by IFRS 7 to IAS 32 on which the disclosure requirement under IAS 32 is uh, superseded by IFRS 7. That's why IAS 32 is now more on presentation of financial statements. Then we have IFRS 9, which is on uh, the broader perspective of financial instruments, recognition, measurement, and partly disclosure. So this uh, latest accounting standard, uh, which was issued last April, 2009 uh, had been superseded uh, the IAS 39 and uh, it amends the disclosure requirements of IFRS 7. However, uh, IFRS 9 still allows the use of hedge accounting as uh, requirement by IAS 39. For the financial instruments, um, it was defined by IAS 32 as 
any contract that gives rise to a financial asset of one entity and a financial liability or equity instrument of another entity. So there are two parties. First, there is a first contract because there is an agreement. And then there are two parties because there is a contractual right to receive cash or other financial asset by one entity and then there is a contractual obligation to pay cash or to pay another financial asset by another entity. For the financial asset, financial asset is defined by IAS 32 as a cash or an equity instrument of another entity or a contractual right to receive cash or another financial asset from another entity. So examples of financial asset is cash itself, uh, like coins and notes, cash in the forms of checks like traveler's checks, manager's checks, cashier's checks, and any other commercial checks. We also have cash in banks like time deposit, saving de savings deposit, demand deposits, checking deposits. We also have simple financial instruments like trade accounts receivable, notes receivable, loans receivable, and bands, bonds receivable since uh, it fall under uh, the definition of financial asset as a contractual right to receive cash or another financial asset from another entity. We also have perpetual debt instruments like perpetual bonds receivable, debentures, and capital notes. Then we have equity instruments issued by another entity like non-putable instruments and then putable instruments of another entity. Then we also have derivative instruments. So a derivative instrument is actually a separate topic that needs to be discussed. However, we need to discuss it here for an overview. And uh, examples of derivative instruments are common derivatives like swaps, options, features, and forward contracts. We also have in-substance derivatives, so these are actually not derivative contracts. However, in its accounting and economic substance form, they fall into a derivative instrument classification. Then we also have regular way contracts. So financial asset is always favorable on the part of the entity. So any transaction that is favorable on the part of the entity results to financial asset. For the financial liability, it is any liability that is a contractual obligation to deliver cash or another financial asset to another entity or to exchange financial assets or financial liabilities with another entity under conditions that are potentially unfavorable to the entity. So example of financial liability are simple financial liability instruments like trade accounts payable, notes payable, loans payable, and bonds payable. We also have perpetual debt instruments like perpetual bonds payable, debentures, and capital notes. We also have putable instruments. Uh, this is issued by the entity itself. Like for example, we have redeemable preference share. So in its legal form, it's an equity instrument. However, in its accounting and economic substance form, it falls into a liability, a financial liability, since redeemable preference share have maturity date. We also have derivative instruments like common derivatives, in-substance derivatives, regular way contracts, and embedded derivatives. So embedded derivative is uh, naturally in the financial liability classification or it involves non-financial item classification. For other debt instruments, we have overdrafts and mortgage loans. So financial liability uh, is more on the unfavorable side to the entity. For the equity instrument, we have uh, non-putable ordinary share. So they call it ordinary share or common share. So it is called non-putable because there is no maturity. Putable and similar instruments, uh, these are like redeemable preference shares, which has a maturity date, then preference shares, which is uh, 
the normal preference shares. Then we have also warrants and feed and call options. So under IS32, equity instrument is an instrument that includes no contractual obligation either to deliver cash or another financial asset to another entity or to exchange financial assets or financial liabilities with another entity under conditions that are potentially unfavorable to the issuer. So equity instrument like financial liability is also unfavorable on the part of issuer or the entity. Then uh, don't get confused uh, if there are non-financial assets and liabilities. So these are different from the financial assets and financial liability. So we need to discuss what are those non-financial assets. So non-financial assets, uh, these are physical assets such as inventories and PPEs, right of use assets and intangible assets such as patents and trademarks. These are not assets financial assets because control of such physical assets right of use assets and intangible assets creates an opportunity to generate cash inflow or another financial asset but it does not give rise to a present right to receive cash or another financial asset assets such as prepaid expenses for which the future economic benefit is the receipt of goods or services rather than the right to receive cash or another financial asset are not financial assets as well. For the non-financial liabilities, we have deferred revenues and most warranty obligations are not financial liabilities because the outflow of economic benefits associated with them is the delivery of goods and services rather than the contractual obligation to pay cash of another entity as financial asset. Assets and liabilities relating to non-contractual arrangements that rise as a result of statutory requirements imposed by governments such as income taxes and levies are not financial liabilities or financial assets because they are not contractual. Similarly, constructive obligations as defined by IAS 37 do not arise from contracts and are therefore not financial liabilities.